who's after then we have gojo right mm -hmm. gojo was mm, one of the newer ones he's more like and when i tell you their names i mean and describe like rock monster he literally looks like a rock monster we had a spirit guide drawing where he used david hasselhoff and who is the dude from all might, all might yeah. and then the the dude from uh what is it called oh you're talking about the rock dude yeah but he's made out of metal he's from i don't remember his name deadpool yeah hi i'm em and i'm liv and we're your meta sidekick so Today, we're going to be talking about our spirit guides again, because we did a video a really long time ago, like the beginning of our channel, when I didn't even know I had spirit guides, and now I have a lot more. Oh. So, you didn't know we had spirit guides when we did the first I mean, video? I knew I had Zeroth, but that was it. Okay. Because you were the ones that, you were the one that was like, did you know that your blue man dude is a spirit guide? And I was like, what? So, I was like, wait, you, you didn't told me that. Are we going to have this con- oh, oh, I'm having deja vu. We've had this conversation again. You always tell me that I told you spirit guides, yeah, but- Yeah, because I told you that I had a spirit guide, and you told me your spirit guide has weird facial expressions. And I always remember you telling me this conversation. Once I tell you, you're the one that told me that spirit guides were a thing. Sorry. I'm having deja vu again. I think this is the third time we've had this exact conversation. Well, do you think you have more now? Well, yeah, I haven't... I know you have at least three more than the video we recorded last time, so... Yeah, I think mm -hmm. three is a good number. Although, I do... I think it's interesting when I checked Asana today and I saw that we were going to do spirit guides, I was like, hmm, every time I've been getting on a reading with somebody for, like, I don't know, the past week-ish or so, give or take, I keep seeing a dragon, and I'm like, who the fuck is this dragon for? Is it for me, or is it for someone else? Because I always keep thinking it's for someone else, and then they never ask about it. It's not one of their spirit guides, and I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like you have more than three new ones. Oh, I'm excited. Are you going to read me? <laughs> Are you going to read me? I can try. I think we should do that. Okay. We'll start with yours. So, everyone has spirit guides. Watch this video. That is somewhere. A spirit guide is essentially the NPC of your video game that tells you what to do in your life. Meaning, they are here to guide you on your path because once you incarnate, be born, you forgot your plan. They know the plan, they know what we're about to do, they guide you. That's You got it, everyone has one. A lot of people think only we have them because we're psychic mediums, but everyone has them. Most people will talk to their spirit guides passively all of the time. You probably don't know you are doing it. <laughs> yeah. So You don't need like a fancy seance or a big yeah. d dance or the Macarena to talk to them. You can just talk to them. Yeah, it's just figuring out the difference between your thoughts and their thoughts. So, you want to talk about your spirit guides? But yeah, we got Blue Man Dude. He's the OG. He's the mm -hmm. one that's been there forever and ever and ever. Um, M oftentimes, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you do spirit guide tarot readings for people, they will have a spirit guide that's been there since they were a baby and they'll show you like a teddy bear or something like that because they're the one that's been there since you were like a tot, even though your spirit guides are there the whole time. They're just the ones that have been helping you for the longest. Uh, he's that for me. So. Are you sure? <laughs> Blue man dude? Yeah. I mean, that's how it is. you ask him? I don't know. Maybe. Because he told me just now that I'm asking him that he, the reason why he started seeing him was that's when you, things changed and your mediumship started happening. Yeah. So that's why he stepped forward. Okay. I don't know what it would be before him because I always just start with him. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's very quiet. Were you like very silenced as a child? Like, you weren't allowed to, like, they want me to say you were seen, not heard a lot of the times. I mean, maybe. That's what my parents used to tell me when I would act, when I would act out. The children are supposed to be seen, not heard, but I don't know if I really cared. <laughs> I was a really rambunctious child. Disciplinary tactics usually didn't work for me <laughs> as a child. Were you overly innocent when you were super young? Like, very naive? I still am. Okay. I've had multiple people, different people, tell me that. So, okay, so for your spirit guides, 
they are always with you, but there's different chapters of your life in which they step forward for you because they help you with certain things. So usually when you have a big chapter in your life change or something like that happens, that's when a spirit guide will step forward. But it doesn't mean they're not there prior leading you up to it and after helping you with that same thing. So when I say your first spirit guide, that's the spirit guide that you come in with. I usually see them as like toys, innocent things, things that you would associate to children and that's how they tell me that they're first spirit guides. Um, the spirit guide that you have for your first one is white and it's a bunny. That's cute. When you asked me if I had a first spirit guide, if I saw one, I saw like a white fluffy cloud like cotton or stuffing, so that makes sense. Yeah, the rabbit thing specifically represents innocence for me because they'll usually give me signs or symbols and I should also preface spirit guides, there are, they are just energy so they have a lot of different ways of being perceived. So if you went to other psychic mediums, they may only see them as like people or something. But for me specifically, they'll show me signs and symbols to explain why they're here for you. So I'll get colors for them because each color has a different associated meaning. And then I'll get sign and symbol. So white rabbit. Um, white is usually representative of if you understand white light, you have a rainbow of colors in white light. It's a combination of all those things. So it means you're very adaptable to things, which they're telling me it's just a lot of change that have happened in your life. That's why you got a white spirit guide so fast. But they also show me that their eyes are blackened because you've also experienced a lot of trauma. They make me feel like you were silenced a lot. A lot of your personality wasn't accepted by big authority figures in your life. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm sure that's happened. <laughs> rabbit. So the innocent thing is, uh, comes into, comes into play a lot in your life. So. And I mean that in a way of like, I don't think that you're wrong. It's just, if it's something that was hard for me, I might just not remember it or uh, know that it's happening. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Yeah. Black usually represents like trauma and white usually represents like innocence or adaptability. So you're probably a child that thought about everything overly too much. And you, uh, it's hard for you to explain things because you think in huge overreaching thoughts that are hard to be, uh, simplified. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That is your first spirit guy. <laughs> That's cute. I'm naming him Fuzzy Lumpkins. <laughs> um, so, well, that's fun. And then my third spirit guide that came in was happening when I was still in college and college was really, really hard for me for a multitude of reasons. Um, I was always exhausted because I was just doing a lot of things, both physically and mentally. And he helps me with like comfort, comfortability. He's associated with yellow. He looks like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo mixed with like a hippie surfer dude. Um, and then I have Victoria. She's the only one that I ever had like a real name for. And the reason I named her Victoria is because she gives me cranky, angry vibes, like the redheaded vampire lady from, what is it? Twilight. Sorry. I had to like go back to my teeny bopper ears and be like, what is that thing that I read? Cause I wanted to be cool. Cause all the cool kids read it. And then I still wasn't cool. Twilight. And she is somebody that, or one of my spirit guides that tries to like push me to be more whatever in life. And I'm like, I don't like you. She's like, she looks like a dominatrix type weird thing. Non, non weird thing. Anyways, who else do I have? My rock monster dude. His name, he says is David, which is annoying because that's boring. He also said Shaggy's name is Christopher. Yes. She didn't say that when oh. you said I talked about him. Shaggy. <laughs> Um, and then rock monster, my rock monster dude, what does he help me with? Well, the reason he came in was because we started metapsychics and you felt like you needed to protect your energy. So you said that you go inside of his energy and he makes things quiet. I'm so Is glad you remember these things. No, <laughs> I don't remember. I, I was doing so many things when we started metapsychics. I, I, it was a fever dream. 
So I'm well, glad you that his energy sounds like a um, heartbeat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I needed you to just trigger that memory for me, thanks. Um, who's after? Then we have Gojo, right? Mm-hmm. Gojo was mm, one of the newer ones. He's more like, and when I tell you their names, I mean, in describe like Rock Monster, he literally looks like a Rock Monster. We had a spirit guide drawing where he used David Hasselhoff, and who is the dude from All Might? All Might? Yeah. And then the the dude from uh, what is it called? Oh, you're talking about the rock dude. Yeah, but he's made out of metal. He's from... I don't remember his name. Deadpool. Yeah. I can't remember. Anyways, and then Gojo's more ethereal. For me, he just looks like a sky galaxy type thing with, like, Mickey Mouse hands. Insert ha-ha here. Because <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> um, and he's an ass. He kind of... Usually when I talk to spirit guides... Either I can talk to them individually, or they'll talk, like, collectively. So when I talk to my spirit guides, I don't usually single one out all the time, so they'll just give me information collectively, but Gojo's an eccentric character, and he's like, actually, I'm up here, and they're down here. I'm like, okay, whatever. You you do you. And then I had a new spirit guide who's feminine. I don't really know what she looks like, per se, but she portrays herself to me as hawks and through hawks. So when we talk about spirit guide communication, there's lots of different ways to communicate with your spirit guides, but one of the first ways that M started doing it was through physical clairvoyance or signs and symbols that you can use in like your environment or your surroundings. And for her, she uses hawks for me. And I've been seeing a shit ton of hawks lately. Why? I don't know! <laughs> Lasker! I don't- I, they don't tell me why. I think it's just the fact that I need to know that they're around so they'll show me things. But I remember I was wondering why she was a hawk and we had a conversation about what birds mean, specifically hawks. And it's that they sort of like scout out and point you in the right direction. So I feel like I've been feeling very lost in my directionality and like purpose in a lot of different aspects of my life. And to know that I'm seeing hawks makes me feel that she's around and she's telling me like you are in the right direction because if I wasn't seeing hawks I would feel like I'm not going in the right direction there isn't something that's scouting out and looking ahead for the path that lays beyond yonder mm -hmm. um <laughs> and then my most recent spirit guide who came forward like two weeks ago I think two three weeks ago he um uh, he just looks like a mossy ass rock. So I don't really know what that means. He just literally showed himself to me as a small rock like this big with moss on it in a black nothingness. And I was like, cool, thanks. <laughs> well, I feel like you get a lot of spirit guides like that. What do you mean in a black you nothingness? You have a lot of readings where you tell people that they have a mossy rock guide. Do I? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it's just a, a sign or symbol for their energy then. Mm -hmm. Same as rock monsters. Uh, yeah, that's true. Rocks usually mean that they're grounding and they help for you. For you. Yeah, so. for me. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. he's pretty cool. I don't know what his name is. I haven't given him a name. So, he's got a different frequency than my rock monster though. It's a little bit different. And he deals with water, whereas my rock monster doesn't deal with water. But, yeah, those are our spirit guides. And uh, they help with different things. Okay, you want a reading? Me? I thought so you gave me one already. There was only one guy. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah, I thought we were done. So, you have your bunny guide. Um, so one of the things that spirit guides will do for me, because when I do spirit guide readings, they'll show me a line in front of me, and they'll place themselves somewhere on the line, and it's a timeline based upon when they come in for you. So that direction is past, and this direction is future. So it helps me to understand why they came in and what they do. So first spirit guide bunny thing. I don't think he- I don't think they have a gender necessarily. I don't- I think they do, but it doesn't matter. So that was the first one. Sorry, you have an orange male guy that's like the Flash. Like, 
really, really fast moving. It's kind of like when Spongebob says, you want to see me run to that mountain and back? I think it's Patrick. You no, you're right, it's Spongebob. Okay. Patrick touches his toes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, he came in after Blue Man Dude, because Blue Man came, Blue Man Dude came in when you were eight. He makes me feel like, was school harder after that? Like... Oh, school was hard in general. Yeah, but I feel like, oh, it's when you started caring. When did you start caring about school? <laughs> Middle school. That's when he came in. Mmm. <laughs> um, because he made me, he makes me feel like... Um, it's like things were moving too fast for you, but it's not because you were, like, moving slowly, it was because your brain moved too fast. Does that make sense? Yeah, ADHD. <laughs> yeah. So, he's like, I was there to make you feel like you were catching up. So, orange usually deals with outward expression for me. So, he was helping you to get the thoughts that were going on in your head out. Because they made me feel like you had a lot of them that you didn't feel like you could express. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are you seeing them physically? Or in your mind's eye? Or both? It's just fun to watch you look around. <laughs> I have a line. That's why I explained the line. <laughs> because I, um, it's easier for me to picture things in front of me within an area. Because you say that you have like a black space. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense to me. So I have a line, so I look at where they're at on the line. Is it like dodgeball? Are they gonna start throwing things? <laughs> it's what it makes me think of when you say a line. Well, Light up like, for dodgeball! It looks like a timeline. You get picked last and then you're sad. <laughs> you know, it makes a lot of sense. I always, I've always struggled in school and, uh, I always got like C's on my report card, which were like good, and if I got a B, that was even better in elementary school, or like an S for satisfactory. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then once I got to middle school, we had three elementary schools that dumped into one middle school. So every person that I grew up in elementary school with had new friends, and I wasn't like one of those children, because my mom was divorced, so we never really, we didn't have a lot of like extracurricular activities in elementary school. All the other kids I did like soccer practice, baseball, wrestling, swimming, what, church. They knew each other even though they didn't go to the same schools because they would do activities where all the kids could meet each other. So when I got to middle school, all of the kids knew each other and I didn't know anybody besides the kids that went to my elementary school. So all the kids had friends and I was like, damn, I have no one. And that's how I became friends with Abby. But Abby was the girl that used to stay inside at recess and read Harry Potter books and I thought she was weird and I yelled at her in kindergarten because she's the oldest of five siblings so when she approached me and was like how are you today little girl I was like don't talk to me I'm sassy Olivia and then we became friends but she was smart so I was like wow these kids talk about homework at the lunch table <laughs> I've never done that before so that explains Speedy Gonzalez uh, <laughs> yeah spirit guide just so people have like a backstory. Mm hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Because when your friends are on the honor roll and you're not, you're like, well, I don't have anything to talk to them about. <laughs> yeah. So you become on the honor roll. Yeah. Sorry, I'm talking to your guides. Um, you have a black guide, a dragon guide. Does the black guide fall into the floor? Mm hmm. Like how Raven does that weird thing with the whatever. It just yeah, it like looks like like lava mm -hmm. when it's cooling off and turning black. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. He's masculine presenting. He's new, fairly new. And he says you're getting swallowed up in the nothingness that is life. Does that make sense? <laughs> mm. I mean, yes and no, but I feel like he might have came around when we started investigating places. Why? Because he shows me that he looks just like black goo, like you said, but then he falls into the floor and he's like sticky. So it helps me like just stick in one area and like make things not, like the floor is lava. He says mm -hmm. it like makes everything quiet. He's very clairaudient and clairsentient. Mm -hmm. 
so I when he falls into the floor around me everything gets quiet and manageable but black usually represents dissociation to me mm. interesting yeah I don't know he's like hard to talk to because you don't want to talk about the dissociated parts so those aren't accessible for me I don't know if that makes sense yeah or not that I don't want to talk about them but I don't know what they are same thing as like like you don't body. want to know about them yet like you aren't ready for that so obviously I don't get access to that mm -hmm. if that makes sense mm -hmm. um so he's not gonna tell me things like that but he's new he makes everything feel really slow, sluggish, and gross. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have confidence issues about talking about him now, so I don't know. You can talk about him. Um, I don't know. He makes me feel like you have like reservations about yourself. I don't know what that means necessarily because he's not telling me exactly what it is, but there's like things you don't like about yourself. That's what he's talking about. I mean, that would make sense. Everyone has things they don't like about themselves. Am I able to pinpoint them while we're on camera right now? No. <laughs> but is this a safe spot for you to talk about things? Yes, because Roberto's here. Yeah, well, he makes me feel like he's the one that's starting to show you those things. Like, so you can start accepting them about yourself. Um, but he's fairly recent. I can't tell when because I feel like he came in just as slow as he feels. Mm. So you say that he came in for, um... Oh, I know what you're talking times. about. What? I have lots of reservations about myself. One of them being that I will never be a fast runner. Um, one, you know, like you have dreams sometimes and in that dream you can do something really, really cool and you just do it all the time, mm -hmm. whether it's lucid or not. For me, that's running fast. I've always had a, a chip on my shoulder about being slow at all points in time. So when I have a dream where I can run really fast, it's mm -hmm. great. Like without getting tired or getting leg cramps or needing like a SpaghettiOs break. Uh, the other reservation is about school. I have a lot of things about school. Hmm. So is that why you have an orange guy that looks like the Flash? Because he's fast at running. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> no, I literally thought about that when you said that too. Because I was like... Damn. And that's when I started cross country because my mom made me do cross country because my brother did it too. Horrible. It was horrible. Whoever runs cross country, you're like a masochist. I'm Honestly. Sure then. She threw up Gatorade and it traumatized me for life. I almost threw up once just so I could beat this other girl because she was mean to me and she bullied me at summer camp and I literally ran past. It was the best time I ever got in cross country too. Yeah, well, uh, he makes me feel like he didn't necessarily come in for ghost hunting, but he came in when you got, oh, he wants me to say, when you started thinking about having a baby. Well, it's been a long time, and that's Sorry. probably when I had. When you were thinking about getting pregnant. It's a, that's a long time. It's There's a lot a longer difference than you thought, though. Between it happening versus... Thinking about it. No, I get it. Thinking about it. I've been thinking yeah. about it for a long time for a lot of different reasons. Yeah, but after you got married is when it became more of a possibility. It was Well, you're talking about reservations, too. Reservations about myself. And there oh, was... yeah, because they tell me specifically with that, in the case of when you have a child, that's when you start seeing the reservations in yourself. Does that make sense? So that you can understand your child better. Okay, so these are my spirit guides. I'm going to talk about them first and then Liv's going to read me. So, the first spirit guide that I supposedly think is the one I came in with is, his name is Zeroth. And Zeroth, I think, means like golden light or something. But he's a big blue shapeshifty cloud. He came in because he deals with understanding. So as a child, having a blue spirit guide come in with you, it shows you that I want to know everything about everything. It is understanding beyond what's physically in front of you. 